Hey, what's up? It's Nash here. We got four classic packs to open here. All these packs have been uh, re-released in Legendary Collection, so that's why there's kind of been a resurgence of them. Uh, let's get started. Absolutely, yeah. So, four packs. Hopefully we can get, what, you know, one foil would be nice. Um, but just love opening these packs. Even the commons just make me happy. So, yeah, this is awesome. I'll be doing the Invasion of Chaos Metal Raider, so we'll start with those two. So, Invasion of Chaos, late term pack. A lot of game changer cards here with the Chaos Monsters. You just pulled a Dark Magician of Chaos. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I think we had that in one of our last videos there. And that was like an unbelievable card to pull. You know, still, I think maybe one of the coolest cards I've ever actually pulled from a pack. Not necessarily just like traded for, you know, but to add to the collection. All right, rough open, but we start with the Soul Absorption. And a Fenrir. So start with a couple cards that kind of go along with the whole removing for play strategies. Because um, it started to pick up a little bit in this time period, too. Java Black. And a Prickle Fairy. You know, I can't say I've ever um, pulled this card from a pack, necessarily, but... Decent insect support for a common card. You know, great defense, 2,000. Absolutely. A chain disappearance. Again, another card I can't say I've ever pulled, so awesome to see it. Only activate this card when a monster with an attack of 1,000 or less is normal summoned. Flip summoned or special summoned. Remove from play those summoned monsters, and your opponent removes from play all cards um, of the same name in their hand or deck. The deck is then shuffled. So cool. So that's. You got Man Eater Bug on the. Yeah. Cover of it uh, around the picture. Remake of uh, Chain Destruction there. Absolutely. It's slightly better. Primal Seed. Special summoning, you know, the Black Cluster Soldier and Roy Beginning or Chaos Emperor Bird Dragon. Inferno. So that's pretty cool there because we get to see with Inferno and Fenrir the fire and water versions of basically the same card, although Inferno obviously had the better defense to it. Um, but as far as which one had the better effect, I think they... I wouldn't necessarily say one had a better effect than the other one. I think they were both had effects that were very conducive to their strategies for their respective decks. Were they both in the uh, structure decks for fire and water? Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, one burns life points and the other one is reliant on attack. And Heart of the Underdog. And a Balloon Lizard to round things out. Very cool. All right, so let's see. We pulled Chain Disappearance for our rare there. Let's move on to Metal Raiders here. Second booster pack. Not much you can say, you know. Uh, just classic. Oh, yeah. I mean... It changed the game in one way, you know. It'd be trap cards. But like we can see here, fusion cards also becoming a lot more viable to the, to the game at this point. Oh, yeah. So start with the Deep Sea Shark. We get the Electric Lizard. The Coral card. Absolutely. And the Bistro Butcher. Now, this would be one of those common cards where if you pulled this back in the day, you know, when Metal Raiders was released, this is like 1,800 attack points and a four-star monster. That's great. A Musician King. Very cool. And Little Chimera. Another card, actually, I think. This was in the uh, Fire deck as well. Yeah. A crawling Dragon. Larva Moth. Not as effective as it was in the show there. Yeah. Ooh. King of Yami Makai. This is, uh, yeah. Loved seeing this card in the show. Um, I mean... That was, that was pretty much the appeal of getting it in real life, you know. The yeah. Crimson Panic's best card there. Absolutely. And Gazelle, the King of the Mythical Beast. Cool card to round out on because another, you know, obviously EV card there. So for our Metal Raiders, we got the Little Chimera for our rare. No foils yet, but hopefully we can turn that around now. All you. All right, Dark Crisis. This is uh, season, the heart of season three here. 
And definitely a lot of cool cards just overall with this. All right, nice. We're starting out with a Cyber Raider here. This early Battle City card that finally got released. Now oh, yeah. with an effect, too. Thousand Needles. Always a cool card with 1,800 defense points that really fend off a lot. Final Countdown. Interesting uh, game winner card here. One of the more um, sought-out cards, I think, in... Um, the, one of the more sought-out spell cards, at least, in this set. Because I think people still talk about this card to this day, so it's... Yeah. Gaga Gigo. Great four-star monster. Normal monster. Oh, yeah. Archfiend, Archfiend Soldier. Soldier. Another awesome normal card. I mean, yeah. <laughs> And a Berserk, Berserk Gorilla, or Berserk Dragon, <laughs> not Berserk oh, Gorilla. Well, it's great. We finally got a, got a foil here. Uh, this one used by the Big Five here. Uh, again, not that great, but, uh, you know, it's cool just because of how he was used. And if you can get it going, you know, might give you an edge. Drag down into the grave. That was, I mean, this was probably one of the, also another one of the more sought-out spell cards from yeah. the set. Except now, you know, Duels Pack Battle City's come out, so it's been... Yep. Released again, but I mean, speaking of which, late Battle City card, uh, I think it was called like Michizuri of Doom, and the in the show, similar effect too. So it's it's cool. Archfiend's Roar. Oh yeah, another. You know, this whole set was really full of Archfiend cards. So uh, cool to see that track card too. Yeah. And a Keldo, another Ishizu card. Oh yeah, just no. no normal cards in the show, but they get cool effects here that kind of build up a fairy theme. So that's cool. Absolutely. That was a great uh, pack. <laughs> yeah, we get a Berserk Gorilla and Archfiend <laughs> Soldier out of that. Now on the Spell Ruler, formerly known as a Magic Ruler. All right, starting out with a Ceremonial Bell. That was a real game changer. Yeah. Giant turtle who feeds on flames. Absolutely. <laughs> Electric snake. Um, hard to use effect, uh, but you get a pot of greed effect. Darkness approaches. Uh, again, interesting game changing effect. Flipping a monster face down. Doesn't really change its battle position, so tough to use. Horn of the unicorn. Awesome spell card there. I mean, obviously, classic people were looking Yugi. for this. With, yeah, exactly, because of the Yugi effect. But um, also, I mean, the effect was strong itself. You know, 700 points. Yep, and uh, the secondary effect of returning, you know, that could be either really good or really bad. And we get a metal fish here. Card Machine and water. Uh, it makes it kind of hard to use with Umi if you're dueling with it back in the day. Kododama. Another earth earth fairy, not a not a hybrid you see very much. Yeah, this I think this has been described before as one of the weirder pictures <laughs> in all of the game. But you know, I I liked how they always did them, you know, back in the day because a picture like that, you know, it was, you know, it was just something cool. Yeah, and effect, uh, this, there hasn't been much like it either. Where only one monster of the same name, so still kind of apl applicable to uh, the current game here. Horn of Light. Kind of the opposite of the Horn of the Unicorn, but an extra 100 points, but it's only defense instead of attack. Yeah. And Gravekeeper's Servant. The first technical Gravekeeper's card, even if it didn't really have anything to do with the uh, later archetype there. Very cool. All right. So out of that. Overall, you know, we get a super rare. That's, you know, technically following the set ratio, so... You know, can't be unhappy with what we got here today, but um, definitely cool. Yep. All right, so as always, you know, contact us if you want to purchase anything or trade, and uh, be sure to subscribe for more videos. See ya.